feed the bottles in my watch I stay on the clock, I'm always on the clock Soon as I open my eyes, I'm at my fucking job What's going on YouTube? It's your man JMV checking in with y'all as I typically do fresh off of home time Just rolled out from the house last night Um they headed down to North Carolina to pick up the load I have now that is going to California and I'm going to be picking up my trainee Billy probably within the next six or seven hours once I get up out of here and uh, we're going to go ahead and roll on to California with this load finish up the, his remaining miles probably got about 16 to 17,000 miles left so we're going to knock that out should take about four weeks plus or minus a couple days and uh, get him situated and, and ready to get on the road and everything. And um, as usual, once I finish with a student, I go on home for another week. But um, making this video today because I want to talk to you all about the reason I went home and something that you got to think about, you know, that I didn't really put too much thought into. I, I understood what I was getting to when I came out here. But when you come out here on the road and you come out on the operator side of the game so obviously if you got your ducks in a row your money right and everything you go straight in the owner operator you gonna understand you, you have no choice but to understand what i'm talking about but even on the lease operator side of the game the two things that i just dealt with at home was one being the reason i went home which was to go see the dentist so insurance health insurance dental vision all that that is on squarely on your shoulders you are no longer a w2 employee um so there are no company provided benefits now me where i came from uh the local job i had the benefits were a1 top flight i paid about 25 27 dollars a week so roughly maybe 115 dollars a month for my company provided insurance and it was great i think i don't recall having a co-pay that was over 50 dollars that was rare most of the time my copay was either nothing or twenty dollars for me or my son so coming out here and you know when i left from there and my my benefits and my insurance you know uh, was canceled after 30 days uh, of no longer being employed there you're, you know you're on, you're on your own you're on your own and um insurance is expensive man it is I'm not naive. I knew I wasn't going to be able to find anything that was going to provide the coverage that I had um, while I was working at Canada Drive for the amount that I was paying, which was basically $120 a month. But I mean, even the most basic bare minimum insurance is going to run you three, four, five hundred dollars $500 a month. So all of 2017, I didn't have insurance because I didn't, I didn't see a need to have it. Um, I rarely go to the doctors. When I do, I'm always, you know, in pretty good shape. Everything is, is good to go. So it was just, you know, money going out the window as far as I was concerned. So I didn't have insurance in 2017, and um, I'm still not fully insured. The only reason I have, I got a dental and vision policy because of what was going on with my tooth or my teeth. Um, ended up having to have a root canal on Friday. I have another root canal that has to be done. Um, next time I come home, as well as several cavities need to be filled. And I have a dead tooth that needs to be pulled. So it's a lot going on. And I'm telling you all this because the insurance that I did get only covers $1,200 worth of dental work per year. And I used all that up on my root canal that I had done on Friday. So my dental work is going to total four thousand dollars, and thirty-five hundred of that I have to come out of pocket on. So, Prime does provide or, or, or offer um, an insurance package for lease operators and owner operators that are leased on with them, but it is very expensive and is really not. My understanding of it is really not that good. So. It's almost like you're better off not even having it because you're paying four hundred dollars a month, and uh, I mean the copay and all that stuff. I can't remember all the details, but when I was going through my orientation, it didn't make sense to me, so I didn't get it. Um, but that's something you gotta think about, man, because that, like I said, you gotta come out of pocket for that. So it's rough, man. But um, 
like I said, it, it didn't make sense for me to have that insurance while and be paying for it for a whole year where I didn't even go to the doctors. I had no reason to go to the doctors or dentists um, that I know of. Obviously, my the dental work I had to have done is speaks of speaks of itself for itself. Clearly, I probably should have went and got checked up, but um. So my next point is while I was at home, I made a video before where I got told where I was parking at. Um, they told my truck when I bought till at home and it ran me $500. Where I've been parking at since I moved, I moved in August of last year, only five miles away from where I was previously living. Um, I have been parking at this Walmart along with several other drivers who are local or Two of them are local drivers. They, they're owner operators. They run out the ports. They're home every single night. Another guy, he works, he's a company driver for this company called Payne, and he's home every other day during the week and every weekend. And we all have been parking at this Walmart and had no problems. I've been parking there personally for seven months. Um, no issues, you know, very respectful. Don't leave any trash. Don't make a mess. You know, just appreciative of the fact that the Walmart, uh, up until recently, didn't have a problem with us parking there. I got home Saturday for my home time. Sunday went out, uh, me and my lady went out, picked up her sister and we went on a little vegan tasting spree, I guess. Visited a spot up in Baltimore, Maryland and visited another spot in College Park, Maryland. On the way home, as I usually do when I'm out and about, I run by and check on my truck. You know, I like to make sure that, since I have been told before that it's still there and that you know nobody tried to break into it or no damage had been done to it or anything like that. So I go by the Walmart to check on my truck and lo and behold, my truck is not there. Neither is any of the other trucks that were parked there. So immediately I went to the same record service that told me um, several months ago and they had my truck, well I called them and they had my truck and they ran me $550 to get it out. And they had told all of us, everybody that was parked there, their trucks were towed and in their yard. And well, let me correct myself. They don't tow the trucks because their yard is so small and it's so tight to get in there. They actually just go in your truck and start it up. They know how to do it. I don't know how to do it, but they, they start your truck up. They drive it. They don't actually tow it. They drive it to their um, lot and park it. So got there, saw my truck was there, man. Dropped $550 to get it out. Um, so something that you got to think about when you come out here and you're especially if you're trying to be uh, an operator where are you going to park your truck at if you don't live in an area that is that provides or has ample parking if you don't have private property where you can park your truck that is your own where you don't have to worry about it being towed or somebody calling to get it booted or something like that you know if you live in an area where typically a rural area rural area um you might be able to swing it, you know, park on your own land and stuff. My my uh, fa my fiance's family they live down in uh, a part of Virginia where it's it's pretty rural and they have a lot of land. And if I lived in that area, I'd be able to get my truck home, park it at my own house and everything. But I don't live in an area like that. I live in Northern Virginia, metropolitan area, townhouses, apartments all around, stores everywhere. It's nowhere for us to park. And the closest truck stop is 55 miles south of where I live at which would be Brother Glen and um, Caramel Church, Virginia, and about 60, 60 to 65 miles north up in Baltimore. So that's entirely too far away to be leaving my truck parked in a truck stop because you deal with the same thing. I like to be able to check on my truck on a daily or every other day basis. You know, with the truck being an hour plus drive away each way, so a two hour plus round trip with no traffic, Anything can happen, man. Leave it at a truck stop. Somebody could back into it, hit it, and roll out, break into your truck. Anything can happen. So, unless you live within an earshot of a truck stop, as far away as I live from one, it's not. It's not even possible. It doesn't make any sense to do that. So, um, I'm in a dilemma right now. I don't. I have to figure out what to do. I, I was. I lucked up. I found another spot to park my truck at when I did pay to get it out. I left it parked there. It was on the, it's on the street. It's not in a, a business's parking lot or anything. It's a street behind a, um, a shopping mall. And um, 
don't have any no parking signs. There were a couple other trucks that I had seen parked there before in the past, which is why um, I went ahead and went on over there. I found a spot, was able to get my truck there. Like I said, there's no signs to say no parking or anything like that. There were other trucks parked there, other vehicles parked there, people's cars that were wrecked were parked there. So I left my truck there for the remainder of my home time and it was fine. So I'll probably try to rock with that for a little while, but I mean, I, I'm strongly considering just when I'm ready to go home, driving up to Pittston, Pennsylvania and parking my truck at the terminal up there and renting a car and driving home, which is, it's, it's a, a major inconvenience. And, you know, I don't know exactly how much a car is going to cost, but I would have to rent a car to drive home and rent a car to drive back. And I would imagine that's going to run me at least $250, $350, you know, for, for both uh, rentals. And that's every time you want to go home, man. So it's something I didn't think about when I came out here, to be honest. I didn't really think about where I was going to park my truck until I was on my trainer's truck. And I went home for the first time. And I was like, man, I can't bring the truck where I live at in the townhouse area because there's nowhere to really park it. And they don't allow you to park, you know, commercial vehicles. So, you know, I just kind of rolled it out with these stores until they eventually they eventually told me but you know like i said they never left a note or anything telling me you know not to park there or anything of that nature so it was kind of a shock and surprising but it is what it is so things you got to worry about man think about if you don't live in an area where you have a lot of land you know private property whether it be your own or relatives or friends where you can park your truck and not worry about it being told that's something you could you should consider and think about and uh, that insurance man it's just a big deal you know, it's a big deal. These procedures and stuff we have to have always, if you have to have them, they always cost thousands of dollars. So you can sit here and pay $500 a month to be insured and never need it and then not have it and, and need it. So I wish I had a good policy, but I'm not really worried about it right now. It's not, I'll pay the $3,000 over the course of probably the next several months to get my dental work done. I'd rather do that than to be paying $500 a month, you know, for just in case purposes but with that said man i uh, just want to check in with y'all like i said like i normally do when i come off home time um, outside of the truck being towed and having to come out of pocket 550 dollars for the tow came out of pocket about 600 dollars for my dental work the first phase of my dental work that was done it was cool as usual you know what i mean every time you go home you're gonna spend money it is what it is but um Time for me to get on this road, man. Grab my boy up, my dude Billy up, and so we can start making some headway to California. You gotta be out there Wednesday morning to drop this load off. You'll be off and running from there on. So um, as always, man, appreciate y'all for checking out your boy. Um subscribe and watch my videos, all that. And um, as always, until next time, man, y'all be easy. I stay on the clock, I'm always on the clock.